waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the earlier at about 7 a.m. A group from the coast Welcome to Hashtag PH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler, a graph court enters a not guilty plea for Senator Jingoya Estrada. Sandigan Bayan Justice Gregory Ong faces dismissal for his links to Janet Napoles. And terrorist group ISIS declares a caliphate in Syria and Iraq. Hello, I'm Patern West Makel. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Senator Jingoy Estrada refuses to enter a plea during his arraignment at the anti-graf court Sandigan Bayan Monday. This prompts justices to plead not guilty on his behalf. His co-accused in the pork barrel scam, Janet Napolis, pleaded not guilty. Both arrived at Sandigan Bayan shortly past 8 a.m. for their arraignment in the graf and plunder cases against them. Estrada's lawyer cited his pending petition before the Supreme Court to stop his indictment. Estrada says the Ombudsman violated his, his rights to due process when it refused to provide him documents relevant to his case. Estrada, Napoles, Revilla, Senator Juan Ponce Enrile, and several others are accused of siphoning public funds coursed through fake NGOs. Estrada and Revilla are already detained, while Enrile has yet to be served with an arrest warrant. This is the second time Estrada is indicted for plunder. He was jailed in 2001 along with his father, for acquiring ill-gotten wealth through the illegal number scheme wetting. The el elder Estrada was found guilty while his son was acquitted. Senator Estrada says the Ombudsman's attempt to amend the charge sheet proves that the cases against the lawmakers were rail railroaded. In a statement, the Senator says the Ombudsman's, quote, haphazard fil filing of charges was motivated by an overzealousness to be glorified as heroes. Gusto kasi nilang magpasikat at ipakita sa taong bayan na kaya nilang magpakulong ng tatlong senador. Kaya naman naghahayan agad sila ng information kahit na alam nilang wala naman talaga kaso at walang matibay na ebidensya labat sa atin. If there are truckloads of evidence against us and that the case is airtight as they initially say, why is there a need to amend the information? On Wednesday, prosecu prosecutors sought to amend the information in the cases filed against Estrada and Revilla. They wanted to strike out a phrase that says businesswoman Janet Napoles siphoned the funds for her own personal gain. Napoles earlier argued she cannot be charged with plunder because her actions were meant to enrich herself as a private individual. The Sandigan Bayan junked a motion to amend the information against Revilla Thursday. Last week, prosecutors withdrew their motion to amend Estrada's charge sheet after the court warned but Estrada could be released from detention if the amendments were admitted. Prosecutors also asked a court to suspend Estrada and Revilla from the Senate while their trial for plunder is ongoing. More on centers Estrada and Revilla, the two centers aren't your typical detainees. Instead of cramped quarters, they are detained in newly renovated rooms initially designed for police officers. Police watch over them 24-7. But the senators are not required to wear handcuffs or jail uniforms. Eyewitnesses outside the custodial center say visitors are free to come and go way beyond visiting hours. Visitors also brought roasted pig and Chinese takeout. Police say it was lenient in imposing visitors are visitor hours during Estrada and Revilla's first few days in detention. Give them time to, to give them time to adjust. Police spoke, spokesman Chief Superintendent Fuders in Dak denies there is any special treatment. He explains Estrada requested for more lenient visiting hours due to his 25th wedding anniversary. Sindak also says the two aren't handcuffed or required to wear jail uniform beca because they had willingly surrendered. He says a surrender means it's highly unlikely a detainee will attempt an escape. Interior Secretary Maroha says the Philippine National Police was following set rules but admits handling a detention center is not the core competency of the police. The Judicial and Bar Council, or JBC, excludes Solicitor General Francis Hardeleza from its shortlist of nominees for the position of Supreme Court Associate Justice. Hardeleza is reportedly a palace favorite for the post. Four make it to the JBC shortlist. Court of Appeals Associate Justices Apolinario Brosellas and Jose Reyes, Commission on Audit Chair Grace Polido Tan, and Quezon City Regional Trial Court Judge Reynaldo Daway. Hardeleza's exclusion came as a result of the move by a JBC member to invoke a rule that states 
votes are required when the integrity of a qualified applicant is challenged. The JBC did not identify who invoked this rule. In an unprecedented move, Hardeleza last week wrote a scathing letter to the Supreme Court accusing Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno of bias and asked her to inhibit from the voting process. Hardeleza said that during two JBC meetings, Sereno raised integrity issues against him that have long been cleared. He added, Sereno's participation in the voting process reflects or presents a conflict of interest. It is Hardeleza's third attempt to join the Supreme Court. A pro-body recommends a dismissal of Sandigan Bayan Justice Gregory Ong for his links to alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Napoles. In January, the Supreme Court asked the Justice to explain his alleged ties to Napoles after his name was mentioned in various affidavits submitted by pork scam whistleblowers Ben Hurlui and Marina Sula. Rappler exposed Ong's links to Napoles in August 2013 by showing a photo of Ong with Napoles and Senator Estrada. As part of her investigation into Ong, Retired Supreme Court Associate Justice Angelina Sandoval Gutierrez summoned the justice. Ong denied any wrongdoing, but admitted knowing Napoles. Gutierrez also summoned Rappler's investigative reporter Aris Rufo about the photo. Gutierrez recommended the filing of administrative charges against Ong for gross misconduct, dishonesty, and impropriety. The report also concluded Ong allowed himself to be Napoles' contact in the Sandigan Bayan and that he accepted money from her for fixing a case. The Supreme Court is expected to decide on the recommendation Tuesday. Ong chairs the Sandigan Bayan 4th Division, which acquitted Napolis in 2010 in a graft case involving the purchase of substandard Kevlar helmets by the Philippine Marines. Police investigate the death of a college student due to a hazing incident in Manila. The victim is 18-year-old Julio Cesar Servando, a sophomore at the De La Salle College of St. Benilde or CSB. Servando was found unresponsive inside a condominium unit near the campus. He was pronounced dead on arrival. Servando and three schoolmates were rushed to the hospital after what police suspect was a hazing ritual. Police say the students were trying to join the Alpha Kappa Rho fraternity. In a statement, the school mourned the student's death and reiterates its prohibition of fraternity-related violence. The Philippines will investigate reports of Singaporean agencies offering Filipino maids at, quote, discounted rates. The maids are reportedly put on display in shopping malls and treated like commodities. First reported by news agency Al Jazeera on Friday, Filipino maids are said to be smarter compared to, quote, less smart Indonesians and, quote, compliant Burmese. In a TV interview Sunday, Philippine labor attaché to Singapore Vincent Kabe warns the accreditation of the agencies will be suspended. But he adds, if there is physical or verbal abuse or mal maltreatment, then we will have to refer them to the police. Singapore remains a top destination of Filipino domestic workers with estimates as high as 65,000. From 25 points down to 4, Indonesian election frontrunner Jakarta Governor Joko Widodo cuts his edge over main rival former General Prabowo Subianto. Widodo's fall comes after rumors circulate he is ethnic Chinese and a Christian, not a Muslim. Indonesia is the world's largest Muslim population, where ethnic Chinese faced persecution in the past. Widodo refutes the claim, but lackluster support and questions about his leadership added to the decrease in his popularity. The Wall Street Journal reports the presidential race fuels uncertainty for investors in Southeast Asia's largest economy. Widodo is a plain-talking form former furniture exporter rated as one of Indonesia's best mayors. His rival, Prabowo, is reading from the backlash of a music video featuring an Indonesian rock star wearing a Nazi-style uniform, opening up a sensitivity over his military record. Prabowo earlier admitted he ordered the kidnapping of democracy activists during the Siharto dictatorship. Jihadists in Syria and Iraq announced the establishment of a caliphate, an Islamic state led by a supreme religious leader. In an audio recording distributed online, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria or ISIS declared its chief Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi the caliph. The group has seized parts of five Iraqi provinces this month. As government forces fight to retake Saddam Hussein's hometown, Tikrit, 
about 140 kilometers northwest of the capital, Baghdad. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 5, nearly 800,000 people in Hong Kong take part in an official, in an unofficial vote on, an, on electoral reform, a quarter of registered voters in the 2012 polls. The referendum offered voters options on how the next chief executive should be chosen. China promised universal suffrage by 2017, but has ruled out voters choosing candidates. Democracy advocates fear only those sympathetic to Beijing will be allowed to run, as Chinese state media dismisses the ballot as, quote, an illegal farce. At number six, for the first time in history, a Vatican ambassador is defrocked for sexual abuse. Former Vatican envoy to the Dominican Republic, Josef Wesolowski, is stripped of his priesthood after he was found guilty of abusing children in the slums of Santo Domingo. Once his canonical conviction is definitive, he will face the Vatican's criminal tribunal, which could sentence him to prison. In January, the United Nations condemned the Vatican for tolerating cover-ups by reassigning priests suspected of child abuse to other posts. Pope Francis has vowed to crack down on abuse in the Catholic Church. And at number 10, a report detailing how Facebook secretly manipulated the newsfeed of some 700,000 users to study emotional contagion draws anger on social media. In 2012, the social network tampered with the newsfeed algorithm to study how positive and negative posts affected users' moods. Results of the study spread when news sites Slate and The Atlantic wrote about it Saturday. The authors of the study said their research was approved, quote, on the grounds that Facebook apparently manipulates people's news feeds all the time. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. World number one and five-time champion Serena Williams crashed to her earliest defeat at Wimbledon in nine years. The top seed Williams lost her third round tie to 25th seed Alizé Cornet. Williams continues her disappointing run in 2014, where she has failed to get beyond the fourth round at any of the three majors so far. In the men's division, Novak Djokovic and defending champion Andy Murray sail smoothly through their third round matches to advance to the last 16. Brazilian football star Neymar drops to his knees and cries tears of joy after scoring the winning goal in penalty against Chile. Brazil beat Chile 3-2 on penalties to reach the World Cup quarter-final Saturday. Both teams managed only two goals in the first 120 minutes. Brazil's Julio Cesar made crucial saves while David, Luiz, Marcelo and Neymar scored in penalty. In a game sa Sunday, Netherlands scores twice in the dying minutes to pull off a 2-1 victory over Mexico and enter the quarter-finals. Down 0-1, Wesley Schneider scores with two minutes remaining, then Klashan Huntelar scores another goal in penalty. It's social media day today, June 30. For a social media post of the day, shortly after the high-octane World Cup match where the Netherlands won against Mexico, Dutch air carrier KLM posts on its Twitter account, Adios Amigos, along with a photo of an airport's departure sign beside a Mexican sombrero. This did not sit well with Mexicans and some football fans. Mexican actor Gael Garcia Bernal angrily tweeted expletives in response, saying he will never fly the airline again. KLM deleted its tweet, but has yet to issue an apology. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It gives you, also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. It's a pretty positive day today, Monday, the first day of the week, on our mood navigator. We have this story, defrocking of ex-Vatican envoy for sex abuse, a first in history, 67% happy. This other story about the Philippine language, Inglesero, Hispangol, and the myth of the great uh, cultural divide. We have 81% inspired, but the votes that uh, drove our mood navigator the most today are, are, are from these stories that are, are color blue on our mood navigator. 
Facebook manipulated users' emotions in secret study. According to a report, 31% amused on our mood navigator and the story that got the most number of blue or amused votes. This one, a story about Philippine political parties, who's to blame for misfits in Philippine politics, 92% amused. All these votes contributed to our mood of the day. Today, most people are amused. That Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, June 30, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Paterno S. Makel. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.